Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This one is part 53. Making a simple steam or compressed air inlet adapter for safely running model steam engines on the bench. This is a very well made example of a Stuart No. 9 model steam engine. If you would like to know more about this engine, please watch the series called a Stuart No. 9 steam engine. As you can see, this engine is very well made and it's well painted too which is what's prompted me to make an airline connection. I can fasten the airline directly onto the union on the steam chest, but it's very likely to blow off with the pressure. For an engine like this, I would normally connect it to the compressor using some 6mm inside diameter silicone rubber tubing, complete with a spring hose clip, as you'll see later on in the video. If this piece of rubber tubing was to blow off with pressure in the pipe, then it would thrash about around the engine and it would really be a shame to scratch the paintwork as the paintwork, like the quality of the engine, is very good indeed. This clip shows the length of blue silicone rubber tubing fastened directly to the union on the steam tap. And as you can see here, the original union is a little bit too small as it's really designed to take a union nut and a union cone which is silver soldered to a piece of copper pipe. In this video, I'm going to show how to make a fitting which screws onto the engine itself. It's a simple plain turning job and to speed up the process, I'm running the video at a much higher speed to get through the job a little bit quicker. I centre drill the end and here I'm drilling all the way through it or as far as I need to using a 1 8 of an inch diameter drill bit. I'd like to say a couple of things about this. I'm using my small walk o lathe that's in my kitchen workshop, or should I say, the workshop that's built onto the kitchen on the house. And I'm purposely using the wrong jaws in the chuck. These jaws are designed for holding larger pieces of metal. They are outside type chuck jaws. And with these jaws fitted in the chuck, well, it's okay, but it's not ideal. Because the work, which in this case is a piece of brass hexagon bar, is stuck out of the chuck far too much. But it's okay for this part of the job. I didn't use a micrometer or anything with this, it's total free hand turning. The outside diameter of the piece of brass that will fit inside the tubing is slightly larger than the inside diameter of the tubing itself. I'm using file in this clip just to remove any sharp edges. These grooves in the piece of brass serve two purposes. Firstly, it helps a piece of brass to grip the tubing inside. And when there is a clip around the piece of tubing, it's surprisingly secure. But also, when the clip is removed, it makes it easier to withdraw the piece of silicone rubber tubing. I was just being lazy by using the external jaws, and here I'm removing them one at a time. Please be aware that chuck jaws are always numbered. In this case, one, two, and three, as it's a three jaw chuck. And when you replace the chuck jaws, they have to be in the correct numerical order. In this clip, you can actually see the scroll inside the chuck that holds the jaws in position. The numbers on this chuck aren't very well marked. Normally, they're a bit deeper than this. You can just make out a number two on this slot. I'd like to mention, before I receive any letters, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing it wrong on purpose because this is definitely model engineering for beginners. As I wind the chuck key, the jaws move inevitably towards the centre position. But what's going on here? Well, it's quite simple. I fitted the numbered jaws in the incorrect sequence. And now when I refit them in the correct sequence and tighten the chuck key, all of the jaws go towards the centre point. The tool post in this lathe I purposely bought because it was very cheap. It wasn't an economy measure on my part, I just wondered how good it was. And it does surprise me a little bit. Look how far the parting tool is stuck out. After parting off the surplus piece of hexagon brass, I faced across the front, centre drilled it and then drilled it tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. First of all though, I used a taper tap and the clue is in the name. The tap is tapered, so it can initially thread the hole much easier. I tapped the hole using hand power, but I withdrew the tap very slowly with the lathe running in reverse. 
However, this tapered hole is no good. It needs to be parallel. So now I'm using a plug tap, also known as a bottoming tap, to get right to the bottom of the hole. At the beginning of this sequence, I showed the drilling of a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole down the center of this piece of brass. But I didn't go all the way through, and for the threaded end, I used a center drill to ensure that the threaded hole was right in the center of the piece of bar. This clip explains it all. There's a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole all the way through. I'm just knocking all the swarf out of the way. And here are various shots of the part. Really, it's a good idea to spend some time making a few of these in one batch run. Having said that, I generally make them as I need them. A quick word of caution, when turning brass, the chippings are extremely sharp. Do not touch them. And here I'm using my workshop vacuum cleaner to get rid of most of the chippings. Here is the original quarter by 40 union on the valve. All I'm doing here is screwing the new fitting onto that. Because I used a taper tap followed by a plug tap, the thread is more accurate. Going straight in with a plug tap can cut the thread over size. What I'm doing here is lubricating the engine cylinder using my oil can, which locates perfectly in the centre on the end of the fitting. Once that was done, I simply slid the piece of silicone rubber tubing onto the fitting, followed by the clamp. This spring clamp presses the silicone rubber tubing into one of the depressions on the fitting and it is very unlikely that it's going to blow off with the pressure I'm going to be using it at. I'm checking the valve timing of this Stuart No. 9 engine, which is a bit retarded. Via the slide valve, steam should be admitted to the cylinder just before top dead centre, not after, as shown here. By using what's known as early admission, all of the reciprocating parts are cushioned by the steam arriving early. There's more of this coming up in the series The Stuart No. 9 Steam Engine. But that is it for this episode of Model Engineering for Beginners. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.